Good morning. Uh, I'll follow Terry's lead and ask how many people know about the Flow Collaborative. I know a few of you do. There's some familiar faces. But hopefully in the next, um, I think I've been told 12 minutes, I'll try to summarize what the Flow Collaborative did in the province of Ontario. So who is Flow and what is the Flow Collaborative was a provincial initiative because patient flow is nationally, internationally on the radar of most, most healthcare systems of how to improve the transition of the patient and family experience really from the stretcher up and what does that situation look like, what are patients and families experiencing, and how can it be improved. So it's really the passion of what I do every day is flow mapping how patients are in the system from a patient's and family's perspective and trying to look at improvements. So I will summarize what the flow collaborative was in the province of Ontario and what it looked like in the Northwest with our two teams. So picture me up here with 18 other individuals because I was the improvement advisor on Team 2B, which meant that I had a year of training and I'm a graduate of the Institute of Healthcare Improvement. But I didn't do this project alone. It was with nine other individuals on 2B and there was also a team on 1A at Thunder Bay Regional. Northwest was privileged to have two teams in their acute care setting. And we were also partnered with the Northwest CCAC and had St. Joseph's Care Group consultants that worked with us because as transitions go we're trying not to work in the silos of our own areas but work as a as a group and looking at the system and how patients flow and and they flow through the system so really the flow collaborative with there being seven main areas of patient flow the flow collaborative looked at four five and seven which is transitions to a long-term care home. It was an alternate level of care improvement project, which alternate level of care is also one of the topics that is um, not a silver bullet and many pieces of the puzzle to look at how to improve alternate level of care and with the improvement of alternate level of care ideally will improve the access for patients in the acute care system. So it really focused on those transitions from acute care to long-term care homes, also looking at transitions to uh, rehabilitation such as St. Joseph's Care Group and back into the community. So that's, that's the parts of the system it looked at. So what is flow? Well, she was called flow because it is a play on the word flow with a W. So it really was a partnership, like I said, between Thunder Bay Regional and the Northwest CCAC. There were co-team leads and improvement advisors and co-team members for the past 20 months now. Um, the project went from De September of 2007 to January of 2009. So the Quality Congress was just held in January and the teams presented their final projects. Uh, as I said, it was an improvement project really looking at at, from the grassroots level, what can be tested to make improvements. So too often in healthcare, people jump to implementation and say, this isn't working. What do we need to do to change it? This is really taking a step back and looking at where are the issues in healthcare now and thinking big, but testing small. And it's really different. Um, they've done this in manufacturing and automobile, Toyota from Lean Sig Sigma, if you've heard about those types of things, have gone on for years. It's it's relatively new for healthcare to look at things and use the model of improvement. So it's really the first project that's been done at Thunder Bay Regional that it was the frontline staff. The senior team streams responsibility was to remove the barrier. So if a new form wanted to be tested because an RPN or an RN working on one of the test units thought that it would be a good idea, it would be um, better for the patients and families, then we were allowed to do that. We didn't have to go through forms committees and all those things to test a new idea so it was really a, a different way of doing things so who Flo was is she was an 85 year old woman and this whole project for 18 months and the resources allocated to it was for patients like flow in the Northwest, what we need to do to improve the system. So she was 85, admitted to an acute care hospital with multiple comorbidities. So just building on the last presentation uh, and, and having those multiple comorbidities and chronic diseases, she became frail and declined cognitively and needed to be transferred to a long-term care home. And so what this collaborative was doing and what it was for the 29 partnerships across the province is that we all learned, like we all taught, we all learned together. And we also uh, stole shamelessly, which meaning if something was tried in the Southwest and we thought it would work in the Northwest, then we, then we tested it out and vice versa. There's lots of things we tried in the Northwest that are now being used
used in southern Ontario. So it was a really a way of bringing the province together, although geographically we look much different and our health systems are a little bit different, we were able to wor all work together. So it was really looking at, for example, we plotted at the beginning of, I believe in October of 2007, that there's 49 main steps from the admission to a me medical unit to transfer to a long-term care home that a patient and family experience and how many of those steps are value added for the patient and family and, and how complicated are there. And then when you map that all out, um, and we did it with stickies and on a wall and moved them around and said this is what normally happens, this is what happens sometimes, and you look at what that process looks like and why patients and families are experiencing barriers. And the goal was we're never going to get it down to a two-step process, nor would we want to, but to look at the quality of that experience and where are there areas that we could start testing changes and making small improvements and, and improving the system. So the aim, like I just said, was to, to make, make transitions from acute care hospitals to settings faster with fewer hassles, bottlenecks, and irritations to everyone, including Flo and her family, the interprofessional team for, that care for her. So really, it was fitting with today's topic of quality and efficiency of patient care across the continuum. And I just wanted to emphasize it's not just faster, but with improved quality. And one of the, uh, the quotes that I heard very early on in the Flow Collaborative is that every improvement requires a change, but not every change is an improvement. And I think this is the measurement piece because too often we do implement change into a healthcare system and it's not evaluated. I, I think like Jack has said, to say or show the uh, documentation, the proof that the change that we made did benefit the healthcare professionals working in the system and the family. So this is Flo's journey, and it was based on, on Edward Deming's uh, work uh, with Toyota, with, with Lean, and what are we trying to accomplish, so what was the aim? So basically the aim was to smooth or improve patient flow, and then we brainstormed, or call it tri-storming, of what ideas could we flush out that we could make changes that made an improvement. And the bottom one, why it's in red, is because it still becomes this day as we spread the flow collaborative to the other five medical surgical units at Thunder Bay Regional, and hopefully out into the region because some of the concepts that we've tested and tried, if it works in Thunder Bay, it can work in the 13 partner hospitals. And really the, these tests of change and concepts that we've tried is all based on improvement of co communication amongst the interprofessional team and amongst the patient and with the patients and families. So why I have it in red is because it's the measurement piece and it tends to be the challenging part because measuring outcomes, length of stay, bed turns, that's fairly early to easy to do. Measuring process change Changes, small things, implementing a new form, a new way of doing things, new way to do it in mission. Did we make an improvement? Those are harder to measure and although you can do the qualitative data, it's still important to have sort of did we cut out two steps? Is it value added for the patient? That's a little bit harder so I just wanted to mention that, that it's the process changes. So these are what the aims were for the teams of 2B and 1A combined was really to improve the timely and accurate communication among team members and patient, about their patient's care their progress and their discharge or their transition planning. So really about communication, surveys and tools were done initially um, or assessed what are we using now, what's our baseline data and then we implemented some change and measured it again. So we used the PDSA cycle and so this is the good place to say when we first were signed up for the Flow Collaborative, I remember going to the first learning session in Toronto with the other 29 teams and we all had 10 people on our team so it's quite resource intensive but we all kind of looked at each other from, from the Northwest um, and said what are we doing here and who signed us up for this because it all really seemed um, Greek to us so to speak. The data was very intense what they were asking us to do but we came a long way in 18 months and one of the phrases for a PDSA cycle is please do something anything and, and I think there's always that desperation in healthcare to say it's not working it's broken there's a barrier let's fix it but um, really it means plan do study act which means you plan the change do is to test the change s is to study the change so now we're back to this measurement piece again and then for act the best way to look at it is, is it a no-brainer and you can adopt the change and it's easily adoptable or do you need to adapt it? Or like the things you learn the most from is the changes that you abandon because I know there was quite a few things we took on at the beginning. We planned to test it and we tested it and they weren't successful from a patient and family perspective or from a health professional perspective and that's okay. And we learned and we just adjusted as we go along. And because you're testing small, the risk is low so there's the matrix that we use for that.